Earlier this year, I picked up an Xbox Series S. I had not owned an Xbox since you could buy brand new Xbox 360 games in shops that have long since closed down. As luck would have it, my local Smiths had one in stock and I was just jammy enough to get my order in before Skynet could snap it up and sell it on eBay for twice its value. You see, while I was interested in trying out new games that I'd missed, I really liked the sound of Game Pass, the service that gives you access to about a million games that you fancied playing but didn't, or games that you're curious about but not enough to risk actually exchanging money for. And I'll be honest, I had a pretty good time trying out lots of games that I wouldn't have played otherwise. Not every game has been a banger, but being able to pick and choose from a fairly big library of games means that, as long as you can be bothered, there's something there to suit most moods. The flip side though, as many more intelligent people have said, is that Games Pass, which while increasing the audience for many titles, also makes them more disposable. How much value can you place on something you didn't spend any real money on and can stall or delete on a whim? It's like the legal version of those old Game Boy cartridges you'd see at markets when you were younger, boasting 40 games, although 30 of them were breakout clones. It also means, for someone like me, that as soon as my attention wavers, I'll drop a game and try something different. If something isn't engaging me, then I won't waste time on it, and I'll flip to the next game and then the next. For the most part, I found it pretty difficult to really concentrate on a title when I don't feel as engaged by it. This is my very roundabout way of saying that while I've grown to thoroughly enjoy The Great Ace Attorney, it's taken a while for me to adjust how I've recently been approaching video games. The story, right from the off, is engaging, but the pace is classic Ace Attorney, like a roller coaster on a long, long incline, building up to a great payoff, but you start to get a bit fidgety while you wait. Obviously this is necessary to teach you the basics of the game and to introduce the characters, but anyone new to the series might find that the first few hours feel like a bit of a drag. As someone who has dipped in and out of the series since the first Ace Attorney, I was desperate to start presenting evidence and proving my innocence. That's right, the first episode and the second one as well I suppose, both place you as the accused, and this also worked well as a way to frame the tutorials for the players. Well, previous games, as far as I'm aware, place you in the role of an inexperienced but at least qualified lawyer, the great ace attorney has you place Phoenix Wright ancestor Ryanosuke Naruhudo, who while having a strong sense of justice, isn't even studying law at the start of the game. Accused of murder, Ryanosuke, with the help of the dashing Kazuma, has to solve the case while also making sure he doesn't get the death penalty. By playing a character who is essentially unaware of court proceedings, it's a clever way to settle the player into the flow of the game. As I mentioned though, returning players might find it a little slow going, at least that's helped by the typically great skipped and genuinely funny character models and animations. Ryanosuke's terrified eyes, Kazuma's flowing hairband and prosecution lawyer Ouchi's fawning subservience are all brilliant ways to understand what kind of person they are. As the game goes on, you'll meet many characters who can stand up there with some of the best of the series, or at least, what I know of the series. Special mention has to go to Herlock Sholmes, a British detective whose deductions are both brilliant and usually wrong. Herlock Sholmes introduces a new feature to the series, the Dance of Deduction. This involves reviewing the deductions made by Sholmes and nudging them in the right direction by either presenting evidence or reinterpreting the evidence before you. It's a nice addition to the game, and the character of Sholmes is great too. He definitely believes his own hype and has some of the best poses in the game. The inclusion of Sholmes also links to some of the wider themes of the game, like the relationship between Japan and the British Empire. The first case involves the death of a British national, and much of the game takes place in London. Again, the game is putting both the player and Ryanosuke into the role of an outsider, giving a reason for further explanations and changes to the gameplay. I've even had time to play the game with my daughter, and while she can't really read what's going on, which means I need to narrate everything, it's great to see how clear the character reactions are and how she can follow the main thread of the cases. Her favourite part is saying objection, which is also my favourite part. For me, I found playing the game in short bursts, almost like reading a book before going to bed, has helped me get into the flow of the game rather than trying to force my way through and burning out on it. 
Great Ace Attorney is a cracking game for people coming back to the series and for those looking for something a little different. My main criticism is the pacing, which definitely won't apply to everyone playing it. The script is fun and funny, the story is full of twists and turns and the technical aspect of the game is engaging. I don't think it will necessarily change my recent gaming habits, but I feel more fulfilled playing the Great Ace Attorney than I felt in a long time. Anyway, I'm off to download 12 minutes Psychonauts 2, Hades for the third time and Gears of War 3 because you see, I have 25 minutes of spare time coming up.